Hello and welcome to what is going to be our second episode of our Cards, the Universe and Everything cast. I'm Joe, and I'm joined today by Emma. Hello. And we're both here again to take another deep dive into a collection that is close to all of our hearts here at Q. We're going under the surface yet again for the Going Underground collection. Very excited about this one. I know, yeah. I was going to say it's going to be a big one to get into. Um, like normal, we'll be going through some sneak peeks. We'll be going through some decks that we've made. And it's been great to have some people get in contact with us about the types of decks we're going to make. So lots to look forward to. We should say that the reason we've chosen Going Underground is because we've got two brand new cards coming out from this collection during Black Parade Week, which is quite possibly my favourite theme that we've done in Yonks. Like, yeah. it is, I'm not even joking, Like, it's probably my favourite since Halloween. And on that note, we're going to be moving on to one of our sneak previews. A black rat is coming to queue. Famously known to be associated with like the Black Death and the bubonic plague and spreading it into Europe. I think it's scientists have proven recently that it might have been more the blame of gerbils i think i thought that was a total surprise <laughs> it was gerbils we well, should I make clear it's still the fleas and everybody thought the fleas were coming on the rats coming over mm. on the rats but they weren't apparently yeah. it's gerbils apparently it spread just too fast for it to be just rats alone and it was definitely probably humans as we can probably experience from the last few years that we've had um, <laughs> yeah, in terms of the we're way. the worst <laughs> yeah we are the big spreaders um the other new card coming out that week in the going underground collection is the black rain frog the picture on it is an absolute smash it as well apparently black rain frogs when they're angry they puff up but see if you just start searching for pictures of black rain frogs they're all puffed up so these (laughs) frogs are just perpetually mad and you're you're going to know about it looks like it really just wants to bury this one burrows yeah so this one doesn't like hang about and ponds and swamps and things like other frogs this is this is a burrowing frog yeah it really does want to get away from everything and everyone yep further adding to it being a little weird though <laughs> another <laughs> just... reason i love it <laughs> <laughs> he's such a handsome little fella isn't he um so just like we did last time uh, joe and i have gone through the going underground collection and picked out our two favorite cards from that collection um neither of mine are a surprise <laughs> my first one is the dwarf Hotto. Hot Hot? Hotto. Nice. I've yeah. been saying Hotto. Is that um, the little bunny rabbit? Yeah. 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 It's it is. so <laughs> small. It's this teeny tiny white rabbit, but it's got like oh. black rims around its eyes yeah. so that it looks like it's in like a Susie and the Banshees tribute act. Like, <laughs> I just love it so much. Um, oh. They're so, so, so small. And they're less than two pounds. They weigh less than two pounds. Oh no! Are they they're really like mic- like the micro pigs of the bunny universe, <laughs> of the uh... bunny world. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And my second one is an equally tiny and cute funny thing. I've gone for the hazel dormouse, oh. just because they're so they're so cute. I see um, like a and common they also... theme emerging in these favourites. It's just yep, like a very really cute is. collection to get <laughs> to get your hands on. Um, and my favourite fact about the Hazel Dormouse is that it sleeps for nine months a year. Nine months? Crikey. Which I think I wish I could do. Yep. Or it's like up to nine months. Up like nine the months, super yeah. extreme ones sleep that long. That's but like basically really, they just that's sleep a really good through lie-in. anything that's not nice sun yeah. weather. So kept it simple. That's my two. Done. Yeah. It's very nice. I stumbled across this the other day when I was going through this collection. And I'm going to go with my first one as Lemmings. The first big myths around lemmings is that apparently people thought they were kind of created in the sky and used to fall in um, in, in storms, big storms. Um, I didn't and, know that one. Yeah, no, that, that's, that, that's the first thing. That's weird, lemmings. <laughs> I kind of typed in lemmings. I was like, oh, I wonder what these guys are about. And it's like people thought they like created in thunderstorms and fell to, the, fell to earth. Um, but actually, <laughs> when you look at why people might have thought this, it's because they, they travel in herds. So like lots yep. of them would like just pop up in random places and like yep. migrate in big numbers. And then obviously someone's gone to a field, seen lots of them, gone to another one and they've appeared somewhere over there. And like, they must be falling from the sky. How <laughs> else could they? It's just, it's crazy. And the next one, the next one is just um, that lemmings have a population control mass suicide event every few years is that one that you've heard before it's yeah. Just like, yeah plus i grew up on the game lemmings oh god so i spent so much of my childhood being like stop throwing yourself off the cliff take it's the umbrella 
I didn't even know that was a real thing. Yeah, that shows how much research I've oh, done. Yeah, no, I love, ones. I absolutely love the game Lemmings. I spent far too much time playing that as a small child. Plus, it's like a kind of common phrase as well, isn't it? Like, don't be a lemming. Like, as in, don't follow the herd and stuff like that. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, or certainly, that's a phrase I've heard loads of. I, mean, I think there's a longer version of it, but in my yeah. head, it's just don't be a lemming. Um, and yeah, my, my other card that I've gone with is the giant river otter. But don't be fooled by these ones, because these, these are big, bad otters. These, these <laughs> ones, they are not good. They eat piranhas. Um, as part of their I read diet. that too. Yep. And and another thing is they've they've been known to take on smaller crocodiles. When I was looking them up as well, I found it really funny that every single picture of them like eating a fish, they looked deranged. Yeah. There, there were so <laughs> there was one article in particular I was going through, and every single picture I was like, this is an absolute madman of an author. They were all yeah. like wide eyed and weird. And it's so funny when you look at the picture we've got in queue, and they're like, oh, I know, yeah, I a cuddle puddle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw that and I was like, okay, yeah, I'll choose this one. And I like, looked them up, and they're like described as the honey badger of the rivers. It's just like, okay, yeah. um. I, I found one that was like, they've been known to take on anacondas. So yeah. like, what? Oh, right. okay. what is a venus snake these are not the same otters that i'm talking about no. but um and, uh, no. and they also apparently these ones uh they produce screams that can be heard from a mile <laughs> off um i don't know i don't know if we'll put that as a little extract in <laughs> just like halfway through that. the podcast <laughs> I lo- see when they all these sort of really weird animal noises and people are like, oh, they think they found Bigfoot in the woods. It's like, nope, just an no, otter. Yeah, no, just, it's just a, just just a otter. crazy otter tucking into a piranha, <laughs> fighting a crocodile. <laughs> Moving on from the favourite cards, we were contacted by some of you and you were interested in seeing some low energy decks. Um, cool. So on my deck, which I've casually called Going Under, like the Very Evanescence nice. song, which is what I've been singing all week. Nice. Um, so what I've got in here is mine is entirely life on land, which I never do. I never do mono album decks. Like mm-hmm. I just don't because I'll try and then I'll be like, oh, I'm missing this random card that I like. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm entirely life on land, um, and mostly going underground. But there's a couple of little critters in there too. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've gone for the obvious choices. Like I've got Pika in there because. Yep. Yep. Why are you making going underground deck without Pika? Exactly. Um, yeah. And I've got a couple of nice cards that play with Pika. So, for example, Angora Rabbit is in there, and uh, Pink Fairy Armadillo, which works nicely with both of them. So I've tried to pick cards that like bounce off of each other and help each other out. Because the thing with a low energy deck is it seems like it's low power, so you just have to be mm-hmm. more careful about um, your buffs and things like that. Yeah. Um, I've also done things like I've got Royal Chinchilla in there. I'm not going to lie, that is in there because I love the picture because it's like a little chinchilla like just putting a little paw on oh, the other chinchilla's man. face yeah, like my child. <laughs> um, love it. I threw in there was the Pygmy Three-Toed Sloth. I also read a story about a bunch of researchers that were trying to track where pygmy three-toed sloths were like nesting and things like that. Uh-huh. So they put little tiny backpacks on them with GPS, oh, no. <laughs> like a wee GPS <laughs> yeah. um, sensor in it. Yeah, yeah. And it was just the cutest thing in the world, these sloths, <laughs> sloths and tiny I... backpacks. Um, and yeah, I think that's me. I, it's just all adorable faces in this. Yeah, it's just yeah. a nice deck to scroll through because yeah. you're just perpetually like, ah, ah, ah. Uh, yeah. Oh, this one's through. good. Yeah, this one looks nicely with this one. And what struck me when we got that uh, request was that I really liked to try out doing some tiny decks and kind of having a look into some staple cards that you can get in there that can get the ball rolling with it. Um, and the one that I found was the Pumpkin Toadlet. Now, I'm sure there's going to be an image of this card on the screen right now, but <laughs> they are tiny. I didn't. I didn't even reckon. I didn't even see that that was someone's thumbnail when you know when <gasps> oh i've just hunt. seen that so yeah. i didn't even notice i <laughs> was just like cool he's so are. orange <laughs> yeah i know i was like oh, what a lovely orange frog and then you see like oh wow he's very very small um but yeah i think with with tiny decks and how they're how they're built it's it's about having that threshold of base power it's about keeping it low and then you have these abilities such as this one which gives uh base energy gains 30 power for two turns and i think it's any card that sits on three energy or below um so then you sort of work into that criteria um and all of these cards will have like wherever they are buffs so it's like 
what you want to do is you just want to start filling your deck with low energy cards and going underground mm -hmm. is a really nice opportunity to do this so we've got lots of different cards like we've got meerkats prairie dogs long uh long-eared hedgehog all those that kind of yeah hedgehog. they make they make good use of those buffs um and as we we're saying with emma's deck and the synergies in life on land they all work together really well i've also got mexican mole is it in there uh goes along with my burrito card which is one of my favorite combos in the game mexican mole lizard just looks so weird as well though doesn't he yeah and he goes well with another one i'm not i can't quite it's naked mole rat and i put naked mole yeah, rat in because he's one. my weirdo yeah. for this deck we've had some requests actually that we should actually play each other so maybe by the next episode we'll have pitted our crustaceans decks against each other and are going underground ones against each other yeah we could do you could do like a bit of like an interlude between our podcast episodes and have like a little matchmaking yep. session going on and um see if they're actually viable um <laughs> yeah it was, it was really nice for just to get the suggestions for this week's episode in terms of the deck building stuff um yep. so if you really if you did want to see something else please do let us know because it's really helpful because there's so many releases and themes that are going on at the moment um and i think for this one it was a black uh the black tree black rain frog yeah. that um took our fancy <laughs> he's so funny i think he's great i just i love him a bit and you know that they don't have a tadpole stage so they're just like oh. the full frog comes oh, out the yeah. egg that sounds, they're just called froglet that sounds absolutely terrifying going on the ground so weird isn't it it's crazy <laughs> and i imagine they're puffy too yeah no mad straight off the bat straight off the <laughs> just bat. as mad do not like it anywhere <laughs> But yeah, uh, just thanks for tuning in this week. Um, again, we'd really love to hear some more suggestions, so get involved with our socials and comment on our YouTube channel if you want to see anything next week. Um, but yeah, we hope you enjoyed. I've been Avid Joe, and this has been Emma. Bye. And as always, keep it cute.